Hello world, welcome to Tech Blog, and you are viewing the server administration tutorial series. In this video we are going to install and configure Virtualman with the Nginx web server. Well, Virtualman is a domain hosting and website control panel which gives the ability to create and manage many domains, as well as simplify both automation and tasks. It is based on Webman. Virtualman is the cost-effective and comprehensive solution to virtual web hosting management. And it's an alternative to popular panel like Plesk and cPanel. So, first I am going to open up a web browser. And search for Virtualman, and open up the first link from search result. It's an official page of Virtualman panel. Here you can see some glimpse of Virtualman panel. Well, back to top and open documentation in another tab. And here you can see pretty good documentation provided by the community. Open installation guide and you could see there are automated and manual installation methods. So, what is the difference between that? In automated installation, your OS needs to be fresh and everything will be handled by installation script. But in manual installation your OS does not need to be freshly installed. This method requires significantly more knowledge of Linux administration. Now go to the download section and there you could find an installation script for automated installation. So, I am going to open up a terminal here, and going to log in into my remote server, where I am going to be install my Vitruelman. And here we, you can see I am using a fresh Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server. In order to execute the installation script, you need sudo privileged user account. I had logged in with root account. Make sure that you have sudo privileged. First thing is first do update your package list just type apt update in terminal. After updating you need to configure hostname and fqdn in your server. First, I am going to check my hostname. Just type hostname-f here is my hostname. So, I want to change that. Open and edit file hostname. Type nano, etc., hostname. And I want to change this to virtualman. Save the file. Next, add both the hostname and fqdn in the etc. hosts file. In my case that is virtualman.technet.in. Change this one as per yours. After saving this, reboot your system. So, I am going to execute the command reboot in my terminal. As you can see, my connection is terminated. I'll wait a little bit to complete my remote server boot up process. Now again I am going to log into in my server. And now you can clearly see my hostname has been changed. I need to execute the command hostname-f then you can able to see my fully qualified domain name, fqdn, 
that is a virtualmin.technet.in. So, at this point I have my fully qualified domain name. Now I am good to go for virtualmin installation. Now what we need to do that, just copy this command and paste on terminal, it will download the installation script. If you do ls then you will see the script has been downloaded. And now execute the script. As I am in root user so just need this after sudo slash bin slash shish and then install dot shish. So, paste it to terminal and execute. By default, installer comes with Apache web server. If you want to install with Nginx server, just go to installation documentation and from there open automated installation. Scroll down a little bit you will find the options available with installation script. To install virtualmin with Nginx you have to use flag bundle or dash b and then after lemp. So, get back to terminal and actually, I want to install virtualmin with Nginx. Hence, I am going to use following command. If you use the help flag with the installation script then it will display all available flags within this installation script. So, as I want to install virtualmin with Nginx web server, I am going to use a flag bundle lemp means Linux Nginx MySQL PHP. Follow the command and hit enter key. Following screen shows you a welcome message with supported OS structure. As it is an automated installation you need a fresh OS. And installation will require around 650 megabytes of disk space. As you can see it will ask for confirmation. So, type yes and hit enter key to go ahead. Installation has three phases, phase 1 is set up, phase 2 is installation and phase 3 is configuration. So, according to your server configuration and internet speed it will take time to complete the installation process. Nothing needs to be done henceforth just sit back and relax until you complete your installation process. I am going to pause this for now and get back to you after installation. So, as you can see here my installation has been successfully completed. Actually I have two network interfaces in my server, one is public and one is private. Get back to the web browser open up a tab aside, and try to access the virtualman web panel. I am going to put my private IP forwarded by 1000 port. Sorry, use HTTPS and 10,000 instead of 1,000 port. You get a security warning as it's a self-signed certificate. So go to advanced option and add this as security exception click on accept and continue. Well, now I can access my webman login panel. As I had said earlier that I had two network interfaces one as private and one as public. For now I am also able to access my webman panel from my public IP address. But later on I am going to disable the webman panel from the public IP address for security concerns. Now go ahead and log into in your server. Type your username and password and hit the sign in button. In the very fast screen you will find a post installation wizard. As you can see it helps you to configure your server optimally as per your requirement. Go ahead and click the next button. The screen will ask you how to use your memory, virtualman has preloaded libraries that can enhance your UI performance but it can consume more RAM. If your server has sufficient RAM then you can choose yes otherwise choose no where you have limited resources. And the second one is to run email domain lookup server. Upon receiving an email, virtualman determines which virtual server the email belongs to. If you are intended to use your server as a mail server too then choose yes otherwise choose no. I am going to let it by default go ahead and click on the next button. In the next screen you will be asking whether you want to enable virus scanning with clam AV or not. 
Well, Clam Antivirus or Clamiv is a free cross-platform and open-source antivirus software toolkit able to detect many types of malicious software, including viruses. One of its main uses is on mail servers as a server-side email virus scanner. In a production server you must enable this. Your client's email is very important and it protects from virus. But remember that it will consume almost 750 megabytes of RAM. I am going to let it be default, as I am on a test server. Go ahead and click on the next button. In next screen you will be asked for spam filtering. If your server receives a large amount of emails this feature will help you to block spam emails. I am going to let it be default because I am not using an email server right now. Go ahead and click on the next button. In next screen you have to set up database. Well, Virtualmin comes with both MySQL and Postage SQL database server. You could choose both or wisely. Go ahead and click on the next button. On the MySQL password screen, enter your desired MySQL root password. It should be different from the root password you used to log in to Webman. Make sure that you copy the root password in a safe place. Go and click the next button. On the MySQL database size screen, select the RAM option that matches the amount of RAM your server has. For a 1GB server, select large system on which MySQL is heavily used. Press next to continue. Next, you'll see a screen like the following, where you're asked to enter name servers. Enter your primary and secondary name servers here which you configured in the prerequisites. If you haven't set these up, check the skip check for resolvability box to avoid error messages and proceed. Next, on the password storage mode screen, select store plain text passwords if you must support password recovery. Otherwise, choose only store hashed passwords. In the next screen you can make the default virtual host for your server. And you could set up an SSL certificate for your webman panel. But I am not going to set up SSL right now. After clicking next, you will see the all done screen. Click next to end. As you can see here, my default virtual server has been created name of virtualman.technet.in. Well, in this left panel you will find all tools for virtual hosts. You can create a virtual server, you can edit users, you can manage your files, from here. So far today, we'll cover panel introductions in the next video. So, guys hope this video is helpful to you, do like and share this video, and hit on the subs button to get the latest update. Tech blog is sign out for now, see you again. Thank you.